This video is going to show you how the cake method can help us write equivalent fractions so that we can add and subtract fractions. Be sure you have the date and topic at the top of the page. The topic of this video is fractions and the cake method. Our essential question will say, how can the cake method help us add, or in some cases subtract, fractions? We've gotten really good at using the cake method to solve for the least common multiple and greatest common factor. However, we can use that tool for much more than just finding the answer to a story problem that needs multiples or factors, right? We can also use it for fractions. One thing that we have to make sure we all know and acknowledge is that when we are adding or subtracting fractions, we need to make sure that the fractions have the same denominator. That is an absolute requirement. You can't go any further if their denominators are different. So for example, 5 twelfths plus 7 fourteenths, these two numbers here on the bottom, our denominators, need to be the same. And the cake method can help. Let's take a look at this problem. 3 sixths plus 1 ninth. If I want to add these, I can't yet, right, because these two denominators are not the same. That means the pieces that they represent are different sizes. Before I can add, I need to cut the pieces into the same size. So I'm going to go ahead and put 6 and 9 into the cake method to help me do this. When I look at 6 and 9, I know that they can both be divided by 3. And that leaves me with 2 and 3 at the bottom of my cake, and that's as far as I can go. Knowing how to use our cake method, right, we know that we can find our least common multiple by multiplying our 3 times 2 times 3, which in this case is 18. That's our least common multiple, but it's also our least common denominator, right? So instead of multiple, I'm using the word denominator. That means that before I can add these fractions, I need to cut them both into the size of 18 ths My denominators are going to need to be 18 ths so you can see I'm setting up my space here. I'm writing my fractions below one another, but this time the denominator of both fractions is 18. If we've recut our fractions, that means that these numbers, our numerators, need to change as well. And I can use my cake method to help me do that. I'm going to draw a couple diagonals here. From the 9, I'm going to draw diagonally to the bottom row to match it with the 2. And from the 6, I'm going to draw diagonally and match it with the 3. 6 was multiplied by 3 to make 18. So I need to do that to my numerator as well. So I'm going to kind of show it up here. If 6 was being multiplied by 3 to make 18, so does the top. The numerator has to be multiplied by 3. 3 times 3 is 9, so I'm going to go ahead and write that as my new fraction. It looks like 9 was multiplied by 2, so let me just remind myself of that over here, which means I'll do the same thing to my numerator. 1 times 2 is 2, so I'm going to write that right here. Now that I have the same denominator, all I need to do is add my numerators together. 9 plus 2 is 11. And my denominator stays the same. It's 18. 3 sixths plus 1 ninth is 11 eighteenths. Let's try one more example. This time we'll add 5 eighths plus 1 twelfth. So I'm going to go ahead and use my space on the side to set up my cake method to find their least common multiple, which I can then use as my least common denominator. These, of course, can both be divided by 2. And then I think I can keep going. I can divide by 2 once more. From here, I know that my least common multiple, of course, is 2 times 2 times 2 times 3, which is 24, which also means my least common denominator is 24. So over here with my fractions, I'm going to rewrite both of them using a denominator of 24. And then if you remember, I kind of used a little bit of a shortcut, right, by looking at my cake and drawing some diagonals. The 12 was divided by, excuse me, was multiplied by 2 to make 24, and the 8 was multiplied by 3 to make 24. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in here, times 3 times 2. And of course, whatever I do to the bottom, I need to do to the top. So if I multiply the 8 times 3, I multiply the 5 times 3, and that makes 15. 
If I multiplied the 12 times 2, I need to do the same thing to my 1. 1 times 2 is 2. From there, I have everything I need. I just need to add my numerators, and I keep my denominator as is. The sum of 5 eighths plus 1 twelfth is 17 twenty-fourths. And this will also work with subtracting fractions. However, we'll do that with some more practice together. I just wanted to show you how you can use the cake method to help you um, work with fractions. So the essential video was how can we use the cake, essential question of the video was how can we use the cake method to help us add fractions. And we'll be putting this into practice in class.